Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be taking another look at Disney stock, ticker symbol DIS. They just recently released their Q4 earnings, where they announced they will not be paying their semi-annual dividend payment in January. But they also did beat the earnings, and they beat expectations for streaming in Q4 and the last year. I'm going to be going over what I think of Disney now and if I think it's a good investment moving forward for dividend investors and the general investing community. Since investing, Disney is one of the first stocks that I have owned. In the dividend portfolio that I show on this channel, they were one of the first stocks I purchased. I released that video on March 8th. I released a video on March 8th showing you guys that I will be buying Disney stock in that portfolio. And outside of the dividend portfolio, I've also owned Disney in my Roth IRA account since October 2018. So I do have a good amount of history owning Disney stock. A month or two ago, I actually had my doubts about whether I wanted to continue owning Disney moving forward. The pandemic caused shutdowns that impacted their business very substantially. The dividend was suspended. They didn't pay a dividend in this last summer. And that doesn't really work with a dividend portfolio very well. And the outlook for some of their business segments was uncertain. I didn't really know how the pandemic would affect people's behaviors moving forward and if any changes in behavior would cause some of their business segments to become obsolete. But recently, my opinion has changed. And in this video, I want to go over why I'm still bullish on Disney stock moving forward. And the reason I'm still bullish kind of comes down to three factors. Their streaming outlook is incredibly positive. They have a commitment to returning to consistent dividend growth in the future, and they continue to show excellence and their other business segments that they've traditionally had, like television networks, their parks, and their movie distribution. So when it comes to Disney's streaming outlook, the Q4 financial results showed some incredible growth in this business segment. Total revenues for Q4 in streaming or $4.8 billion. And for the last year, they've generated $16.5 billion for the full 2020. What this means is that they've grown revenues quarter over quarter in Q4 by 41% and by 81% year over year in 2020. In 2021, this should be their second largest business segment. And in 2022 or 2023, I would expect streaming to surpass their media segment to become their number one revenue generating business segment. In the marketplace for streaming, Disney Plus and the subsidiaries that they own are already major players in the industry. On the graph on screen now, you can see a comparison between Netflix and Disney's assets. Netflix has a total of 195 million subscribers which is an incredible amount of people paying you for their service. And in comparison, Disney, who is substantially younger, has 74 million subscribers paying for Disney+, Plus, 37 million for Hulu, and 10 million people for ESPN+. Plus. In total, that's 120 million paying subscriber accounts, which is still a little bit behind Netflix, but they are the closest out of all the other competitors in the industry. Apple TV, HBO, Amazon even, they're beating. Their pricing is also super low right now. The average monthly costs for Disney Plus and ESPN Plus are both below $5 right now. Over the next five years, I would expect this to rise substantially as they continue to get more content on the platforms and I could see this reaching a monthly revenue per user of maybe about $10 to $15. If this happens, without growing subscribers at all, their revenue could double or triple in size. 
And given all these positive factors, I don't think the market is actually giving Disney the credit that they deserve. By revenue, Disney is pretty equivalent to the trailing 12-month Netflix size that they had in Q1 2019, both about $16.5 billion. At this point, Netflix was growing at about 25%. But Disney Plus right now, as I just mentioned, it's growing at 41% quarter over quarter. So not only at the scale that they're at right now are they growing faster than Netflix was, but if we use Netflix's price to sales ratio at that time of 9.7, the streaming market cap for Disney Plus right now would be $160 billion alone. And I can guarantee you if Netflix was growing at 41%, the price to sales multiple would be higher. But for now, we'll just move forward with that. Disney's total market cap right now is $250 billion, which, excluding streaming, would leave all of their traditional business segments with a total worth of $90 billion. Two years ago, before all the streaming hype happened, Disney's market cap was about $170 billion. This would mean that in the last two years, Disney's business has become half as valuable as it was which is just not the case at all. And in March, at the bottom of the market, the rest of the company would have absolutely no value, which means one of two things. The market is not giving enough credit to Disney's traditional business models, or they're undervaluing the growth that Disney Plus has because the overall company is not growing at 40%, but their large streaming presence is. If you've made it to this point in the video, Please like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification. Only 20% of the people who watch my videos are actually subscribed to the channel. And if you've made it this far into the video, there's a good chance you would like some of the other content that I make. So subscribing would help out a lot. The second reason that I'm very bullish on Disney still is their continued commitment to paying a dividend. Now I run a dividend growth portfolio, and the goal is to grow a stream of dividend income that at some point in the future will be a substantial amount of income. And this becomes hard when holding non-dividend paying companies, and right now Disney is one of those. Disney suspended its dividend payment this summer, and they just reiterated that they will not be paying it in the coming January either. But growth will resume once economic conditions and this whole pandemic situation begins to deteriorate and things go back to normal. They said that they are committed long term to getting this dividend payment back up and running. Now I'm only 23 years old, so I have a lot of time to wait. If it means that I have to wait a couple years and lose a little bit of income in order to continue to hold Disney, a company that I value very highly, and that they will resume those dividend payments at some point in the future, I think that's a trade-off that I'm willing to make. And finally, their other business segments that they have are not nearly as impacted as many people would think by the pandemic. Now, there were a couple of business segments that were hit hard. Parks were shut down for a long time some of them are still shut down. And it's possible that these parks will be shut down again if there's spikes in cases. These parks being shut down or limited has led to a 61% in quarter over quarter revenue. Also, most movie theaters are shut down or have capacity limitations on them. This has also led to a large drop in revenue of 52% quarter over quarter. But these drops are not as bad as I would have expected, and they're not as bad as most analysts expected. But what is comforting is that their media networks, their biggest segment, grew by 14% over the past year, and they even became more profitable when it comes to their revenue. Their profitability grew by 21% year over year, and this has helped offset some of the impacts of the COVID pandemic. So in conclusion, 
Despite the impacts of the pandemic, Disney is still a very strong company. Streaming is blowing away even the most bullish expectations when they launch the streaming service. Their management team is being conservative with their dividend payments right now. They've suspended all of them for the foreseeable future, but they have committed to resuming these once conditions return to quote-unquote normal. And their other business segments are still performing better than expected. And with all these factors, I'm very happy to hold Disney moving forward. If you guys enjoyed the video, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell notification so you're notified whenever I post a new video. Make sure to sign up for M1 Finance so you get a free $10 bonus when you fund your account within the first 30 days, and I will see you guys in the next one.